Salve Maria! Today we are going to talk about a saint who is very very special. A saint who is in a very large measure responsible for the translations of the Bible that we have today and which did influence the church throughout its history. This saint is Saint Jerome. Saint Jerome is one of the four Latin fathers of the church. He helped lay the intellectual and doctrinal foundations of Christianity. Along with the other church fathers, Saint Ambrose, Saint Augustine, Saint Gregory. His name is derived from Greek. In Latin, we call it Eusebius Sophronius Hieronymus. In other words, Jerome, which literally means sacred name. We don't know the exact date of birth of this great saint and priest. But we estimate it to be somewhere between 331 AD and 347 AD. But how was this man? What do we know about his life? He was born to wealthy parents in the city of Streden, in the Roman province of Dalmatia, in present day Croatia. He had a very explosive and strong temperament, but penance and sacrifice. And of course, the aid of grace curbed the excesses of his nature and put a strong will at the service of the Holy Church. A man of great culture and intelligence, he studied in Rome, becoming one of the greatest scholars of secret scriptures of his time. This is no small achievement considering that he was contemporary, among others, with St. Augustine with whom he kept uh, somewhat, sometimes, stormy correspondence, to say the least. He was enthusiastic of ancient authors and applied himself to memorizing long texts by diverse classical authors such as Cicero, Virgil, Horace, Tacitus, Quintilian, Homer, Plato, etc. However, after his studies, he settled in the city of Trier, in present-day Germany, where he began his theological vocation by compiling the commentary of the Psalms by St. Hilary of Poitiers, forming part of the Cenobite community, consecrating himself entirely to God. In his interest in classic culture, but also in his zeal to get to know the sacred places, he travelled to Thrace, Asia Minor and Antioch. To fight his vices and defects, he settled in the Chalchis Desert, not far from Antioch, in the year 378 or 379. After the period of penance, he returned to Antioch. There he was ordained a priest and soon afterwards he went on to study sacred scripture under the guidance of a great doctor. Saint Gregory Nazianzus. In the year 382, he was appointed secretary of Pope Damasus I, replacing the great Saint Ambrose who had fallen him. While in Rome, he was spiritual director of Saint Marcella, Saint Fabiola of Rome, and Saint Paula, mother of the famous Saint Eustochia, and many others. However, in spite of his wonderful work, he suffered a lot by the action of those who were against him. This is one of the signs that the person is a true saint. When somebody does good, when he is combated, when he has to suffer for doing that which is good, he is a saint. Of course, all Christians are called to be other Christ. And if our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, he suffered for doing good, how can it be that a Christian would not have to suffer for the same reason? So St. Jerome had to suffer because of the good work that he did. He suffered slander, suspicion and defamation by the Roman clergy for his work as a shepherd to these holy women. Imagine, if he was calumniated by somebody outside the church was one thing. He was calumniated by the good, for the good work he did by the very Roman clergy, his brothers in vocation. And later on, he would comment that although the world is full of priests, barely one in a hundred 
is living in a matter in conformity with his own state. This sober statement reminds us of the awesome responsibility that a priest has. In St. Jerome's time, also in us, to be an altered Christus, another Christ for his flock. To whom more than priest could Christ have referred when he said, Let your light shine before men, so that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father. Anyway, Pope Damas I also commissioned St. Jerome to translate the Bible into Latin in the version that is known into history as the Vulgate, which in Latin means common, Latin being the language in common use at that time. Until then, the theologians had used the Greek version for the New Testament was originally written in Greek. Saint Jerome learned Hebrew so that he could make the most reliable translation possible. Because of the persecutions in Rome, Saint Jerome traveled to the Holy Land in the year 385 he arrived in Antioch. From there, he made pilgrimages to various other cities, meeting, amongst others, Saint Melania the Elder in the city of Jerusalem. In the year 386, he visited the source of ascetic life in Egypt and finally settled in Bethlehem in the same year, living in a cave for the remaining 35 years of his life. In that city, he founded a monastery and a convent for men and women Cenobites. This was an early beginning of community life, of religious life as we know it today. Jerome had a great collaborator in the holy widow Saint Paula and for her he built a monastery for her and for her nuns obviously. He even wrote an education and manual for Saint Paula's granddaughter. This is truly impressive for the wisdom that we find of the saint in the simple manual. I'm going to read a small paragraph out of this text for you to have an idea of the wisdom of the saint. Make her letters out of wood or ivory and call them by name. Let her amuse herself with them so that her fun is also a lesson to her. When she puts together syllables, she should merit reward and she will be stimulated with the small gifts that can delight her at that age. Don't let her be so colded if she is a bit slow, but stimulate her mind with compliments. Make sure that she doesn't take a dislike to studies because the bitterness felt in childhood could last beyond the years of learning. Interesting how the saint found a way, encouraged a way of learning very different from what we hear today. A way where wisdom, where learning, science would be fun to the person who is learning, would be fun to the student. This is what happens when you are a saint. A saint has the wisdom of God. Even profane professions such as teaching, he is able to find the right way, a divine way with wisdom to teach. But anyway, let's go on with the story of Saint Jerome. In 416 AD, the Pelagian heretics invaded his monastery. There, they attacked the monks and killed the deacon. They set fire to this building and to three other convents of nuns. Saint Jerome had to flee with more than 200 monks. But Saint Innocent I, the Pope at that time, intervened in their favour to save them from the persecution. Jerome's correspondence with Saint Augustine, Bishop of Hippo, is also quite famous. This man, with his explosive temperament, Saint Jerome obviously, spared no criticism when it seemed appropriate to ad in order to defend the faith. In one of his letters, precisely during the translation of the Bible, he reproaches St. Augustine with the following words. I am surprised that you do not read the book of the 70 translators in the genuine form in which they were originally given to the world, but as they have been corrected or rather corrupted by origin. You can see that there is nothing very suave or gentle in his words, but all this was not out of self-love. He was always strong, he was always fiery because he was defending the truth. Obviously, all these criticisms were made with good spirit. And it is also evident how St. Jerome admired the holiness and the greatness of St. Augustine. 
In a letter from the year 41880, St. Jerome writes to him, The truth is that we did not want to spend an hour without quoting your name, for you have been firm for the ardor of your faith and against the winds that blow. Take heart! You are celebrated around the world. Catholics venerate and welcome you as a new builder of the old faith. And what is a sign of even greater glory is that heretics curse you and with equal hatred they persecute me. Something very beautiful. The saint considered that hatred of the enemies of the faith, persecution by the enemies of the faith is a motive of glory for true saints. Here we glimpse into the fiery heart of this great champion of the faith. He knew that being a faithful defender of the faith and a true shepherd meant fearlessly carrying the cross along with our Lord Jesus Christ. This he did with a firmness and gallantry that has crossed the ages and inspires today. He died at the age of 80 on September 30, 420. Saint Jerome, pray for us. If you like this video, press the like button and leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell so you won't miss any of our videos.